Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to learn about modeling, and we're going to play around with some sinusoidal functions and see if we can't fit them to some real-life situations and find out why we study sine and cosine. And we're going to do some calculator work as well, so let's just jump into this. I need to find f of x for the given value of x. f of x, of course, we know that means the y value. Then I want to find the general solutions in the first three positive values of x for the given value of f of x. So then if I have a y value that I want, I want to find out when that happens. So let's just jump in here and do part A, find f of 8. f of 8 means go to your function f of x and replace your x with 8. Now at this point, you could go straight to your calculator and type this in, but I warn you, this is the cosine of all of this stuff. It's not just the cosine of pi over 9 and then that times 8 minus 6. This cosine has an implied parenthesis there, so it's the cosine of all of this. I would recommend you go ahead and clean this up a little bit before you type it in on the calculator. 8 minus 6 is 2, and 2 times pi is 2 pi. So this is what I would do before I went to my calculator. So let's go to our calculator here and do 2 plus... 3 cosine of 2 pi over 9. 2 pi divided by 9. Now I want to show you that when I hit enter that my calculator is in auto mode. That means it's going to give you the, it's the best answer possible. And it doesn't want to convert this to a decimal because decimals are just rounding. If you want your calculator to give you a decimal, you have to hit diamond enter. And this gives us 4.298. 4.298, that is the answer to f of 8, 4.298. All right, now the next part says find f of x equals 1.3. Here is our general solutions. This will be probably the most work. So we want to set f of x, 2 plus 3 cosine pi over 9, x minus 6. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that parentheses again, that implied parentheses. And we set this equal to 1.3. So here we go. We're going to solve an equation. The first thing we're going to do is subtract 2 from both sides. So that will give me 3 cosine of pi over 9 times x minus 6 equals, of course, if we subtract 2 from 1.3, we're going to get to negative 0.7. And then I'm going to divide by 3. Notice I'm just working outside in. I'm trying to get to my x here. So I'm going to divide by 3 and I get the cosine of pi over 9 times x minus 6 equals negative 0.7 over 3. Now, what we have to do is get inside of this x, we have to undo a cosine. And of course we know the way we undo a cosine is by taking the arc cosine of both sides. We don't divide by C and divide by O and divide by S and you know do silly, silly things like that. That makes Mr. G a sad panda. What we do is we take the arc cosine of both sides. The arc cosine of the cosine of pi over 9, x minus 6, equals arc cosine of negative 0.7 over 3. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask my calculator, what is the arc cosine of negative 0.7 divided by 3? Arc cosine negative 0.7 divided by 3. And that is 1.806. We're going to go three decimal places, 1.806. And what's the arc cosine of cosine? Well, we should learn from inverse functions. As long as this is in the domain of arc cosine, then these cancel each other, and I have pi over 9 times x minus 6 is equal to plus or minus 1.806 plus 2 pi n. Now this is like, whoa, whoa, Mr. G, where did you get this plus or minus stuff from? If you go back and we re-watch your... Um, general solutions video, whenever we do arc cosine, we add, and for general solutions, we add 360 in, or 2 pi n since we're working the radians, and then we also do the negative of that number. Go back and watch that video again if you don't remember that part. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to multiply by 9 over pi. So I'm going to take all of this and multiply it 
times 9 over pi. So anyway, our 9's are going to cancel, and those pi's are going to cancel, and that leaves me with x minus 6. But I need to figure out what is 1.806 times 9 over pi, and again, that's going to come from the calculator. 1.806 times 9 divided by pi. And that gives me 5.174. I'm going to round to the third decimal place. So I'm going to get x minus 6 equals plus or minus 5.174. Where's my equal sign? Come on, Mr. G. There it is. Now, we also have to distribute the 9 over pi times the 2 pi n. And I'm going to put a 1 underneath that. We'll see the pi's cancel, and that gives me 18 n. Now, the next step is we're going to add 6 to both sides. So we'll get x equals 6 plus or minus 5.174 plus 18n. So let's write our two equations down. 6 plus 5.174 is 11.174 plus 18n. And then 6 minus 5.174 is 0.826 plus 18n. These are the general solutions. Well, let's see if we're done. I think we have to do one more thing. I think we have to find the first three positive. Let's go back up and look at our instructions. That's always a good thing to do. La, la, la. We have to find the general solutions and the first three positive values. Well, okay, so let's go down here and see what are the first three. Well, the first positive value is 0.826. The second positive value is 11.174. The third positive value comes from this general solution, and I can add 18 to 0.826, and that gives me 18.826. So these are my values for x. Let's go check this on the calculator. We want to find out when does, let me erase this stuff here. We want to find out when 2 plus 3 times the cosine of, and I want an extra parenthesis, remember I told you about that, pi divided by 9, and then x minus 6, close parentheses. We want to find out, well, I'm missing a parenthesis. Oh yeah, because I opened that other parentheses up, up there. So there's 2 plus 3 cosine of pi over 9 times x minus 6. When does that equal? 1.3. So let me go up here and change my window to a good window. Let's go, we're looking at positive values, so negative 2 is fine. I'm going to come out here to 20, and then up and down. Let's see, that function is, has a, what is it, 2? Yes, that is the sinusoidal axis is 2, and then amplitude is 3. So negative 2 is fine, but I need to at least see up to 6. And let's graph this thing. So there is your sinusoidal function. There is the y value 1.3, and we want to find these three intersection points. So what you do is you hit F5 for math. We want to come down here to intersection. Let me get close to this intersection point over here. First curve, second curve, lower bound. This happens between 0 and an upper bound of 2, I can tell, and that is, well, looky there. Well, it says 0.82533, but we rounded some. All right, let's find our next one, intersection. So let me get closer to this one over here. I am at x equals about almost 10 there. So enter, enter, lower bound 10, upper bound 13. And let's see how we did here. 11.174. This would be 11.175, but keep in mind we rounded. And then the last one, intersection. We'll get closer to this third intersection out here. We've got first curve, second curve, lower bound. I can actually just move my cursor to the left and then to the right and we get to 18.826. 
Okay, the last thing I want to do is show you what to do with a cosine. So let's get back out of here, get back to here. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, let me show you what to do for sine. All right, find f of 17.4. So you plug f of 17.4, you plug this in, 5 plus 2 sine of pi over 4 times 17.4. If you plug it in for x and subtract 10, you get to 7.4, right? 17.4 minus 10. Okay, and so then you're going to, I'd go ahead and clean that up if I were you. 5 plus 2 sine of 7.4 pi over 4. 5 plus 2 sine of 7.4 pi over 4, and plug that in on your calculator. Go to my home screen. 5 plus 2, and we get to sine of 7.4 pi divided by 4. Close parentheses, there we go. Looks like it's 4.092. 4.092. Okay, now find f of x equals 6.7. So off we go. We want to set 5 plus 2 sine of pi over 4 times x minus 10 equal to 6.7. So the first step is to subtract 5. 2 sine of pi over 4 times x minus 10 equals 1.7. Then divide by 2. Sine of pi over 4 times x minus 10 equals 1.7 divided by 2. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to do the arc sine of both sides. So I do the arc sine of both sides. And over here I'm going to do the arc sine of this. So I'm going to go ask my calculator what this was. So the arc sine of 1.7 divided by 2, or what this is, arc sine 1.7 divided by 2, and we get 1.016. Now here's where we're going to have to be careful. 1.016. We're going to add, what do we add here? We add 2 pi n for general solutions. But sine, oh, it went away. Click here to restore ink. <laughs> Never seen that before. Um, but with sine, we don't just do plus or minus. Um, this value. What we have to do is in degrees we did 180 minus and for our equation we're going to do pi minus. So I'm going to do pi minus 1.016 for your second equation for sine. Let me get my little selector here. Back here. Boy, I'm marking all over the place here. <laughs> I'm going to pause and fix it. Okay, I, I think I'm good here. So we're going to do um, pi minus, oh well I, I lost that there, it's 1.012 1 point, zero, one, two. one point. This is not zero, one, two, zero, one, six. well I'm really struggling pi minus 1.016 enter and that's 2.12559 so my answers are 1.016 and I'm going to write this down to make sure I don't waste any more time 2.126 1.016 and 2.126 so let's get back here to the smart. Okay, so my equations are 1.016 plus 2 pi n and then 2.126 plus 2 pi n. And a little note here, how did we get 2.126? We did pi minus 1.016. Sine is the only one you have to do that for. So my equations are pi over 4 times x minus 10 equals that and then pi over 4 times x minus 10 equals this. Okay, I'm going to stop there so that you don't, so that my video doesn't have to be way too long for tonight. You, and you would do the same thing from the arc cosine example from before. And you, to multiply both sides by 4 over pi, distribute through and find your three solutions. So anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow.